to live and to love the gospel of the Lord. Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry, presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter of the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. As many of you know, I recently returned from leading a pilgrimage over to the Holy Land and en route to flying over to Tel Aviv, there were many Orthodox Jews on the plane. And I was impressed by the scrupulosity of their observance of the Mosaic Law. It's a long flight from Newark, New York over to Tel Aviv and several times in the course of the flight, the Orthodox Jews would stand and uh, go into an area in the plane next to the restroom where there was a little gathering area and they would face the side of the plane and they would bow back and forth with their prayer books in their hands. And then in the middle of the night, while the rest of us were asleep, they got up and they put on their talids, their prayer shawls, and again, their books were out and they were praying. When the meals were passed out, a meal was given to the two people next to me and I was passed over. And I put on my light and asked the stewardess, hey, you forgot me. And she said, oh, excuse me, did you want a kosher meal? <laughs> and I said, uh, oh, no, no, I didn't. So they passed out the kosher meals first and then the rest of us got our, our meals later. Again, when we were over in Israel, we went to the Wailing Wall. And it's a tremendously impressive site where for many years now, many decades, Jews have been gathering to put their petitions in, in the wall and to raise up, uh, to teach one another and to raise up their prayers to the Lord. Jesus was a pious Jew. He did not come, as today's gospel says, to undermine the law but to fulfill the law. And yet ironically, and it's part of the reason for today's gospel, is Jesus was accused of being a lawbreaker because he didn't follow exactly every jot and tittle of the law. His disciples were criticized for not washing their hands. Jesus was criticized for healing on, on the Sabbath. In fact, that was one of the major charges that the Pharisees, who were the great interpreters of the law, brought against Jesus is that he didn't follow the law. He was a lawbreaker. And so today Jesus comes in the gospel and he says, I'm not coming to break the law to fulfill it. Bishop Barron has often quoted the uh, New Testament uh, Anglican scholar N.T. Wright who has made the observation that the Old Testament is like an unfinished symphony. It's like a drama without a climax. It promises the Messiah coming, and yet that Messiah never materializes. There's an articulation of a hope, a dream, a promise, without the realization of that hope, without the fulfillment of that dream. 
We as Christians believe that the fulfillment of those hopes and dreams come in the person of Jesus. As I came back to Chicago and I was on my way to Loyola University earlier in the week, I passed through a couple of different Jewish neighborhoods. And again, there were the pious Orthodox Jews scrupulously observing the commands of the law in their dress and their way of life. And I couldn't help but think, are they still, after so many years, yearning for the coming of the Messiah? We interpret the Old Testament as the prelude to the new, and we see Jesus as the fulfillment of those yearnings, those hopes, those desires. Jesus, in the most unexpected way, to the surprise of all, comes to fulfill that dream. From the beginning of his ministry, he affects the liberation of the tribes of Israel. He, calls, he comes to call us to a deeper conversion, to a deeper liberation from our sin and our own self, self, self-centeredness. Soren Kierkegaard, the philosopher theologian, has posited that there are three levels of faith. The first is no faith at all, it's living by whim. It's living by our own desires. We're a law unto ourselves. If it feels good, do it. It's my desire, then it must be true. Many people in our culture live by themselves at the center of their own universe, themselves at the center of their own kingdom, their own desires, their own thoughts, their own political views. Those are at the center of their life. Kierkegaard posits that if they are people who are open to God's spirit, then the spirit is inevitably going to wake them up, open their eyes, open their hearts, and call them to following religious law. To realize that none of us are laws unto ourselves and that we need to be guided by these ancient dictums that have come down to us through the centuries for our good individually and as a culture to be guided by these laws. A nation without laws descends into chaos. A religion without law is no religion at all. And yet the danger of that second level of faith is that it can become rigid. And that's the danger that Jesus railed against in his own time against the scribes and the Pharisees who used the law as weapons against others, using their own knowledge for power and privilege. Kierkegaard says there's a third level, and that's to live by the level of faith. That's to be guided by the Spirit. There's a wonderful confluence in our readings today between this first reading today from Paul's letter to the Corinthians and our gospel from Matthew chapter 5. Paul says, We have confidence through Christ Jesus our Lord. He says, Not in the letter of the law, but in the spirit, for the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. The letter of the law, if we're obsessed with just following the letter of the law, it's going to kill our spirits. Because we don't need prayer, we don't need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If everything is just written down in the book, all you need to do is turn to page 59, paragraph uh, 6, line number 2. There it is. Okay, that's what you do. Paul says that kind of faith kills us because there's no need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. The prayer of the the church for opening at Mass today was, Lord, teach us how to discern where the Spirit is guiding us and give us the grace to be able to do that. That's our prayer, to move into this third level to be guided by a faith that is not whim, It's not simply doing whatever the heck we want, nor is it subject to this rigidity, but it's open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. 
One of the places that we visited in the Holy Land was Qumran, made famous because a number of years ago, they found the Dead Sea Scrolls there. There's a series of caves on the shore of the Dead Sea where when the Romans were coming in, this Essene community, which was a radical ascetic community, which had flung from the excesses of what they perceived in mainstream Judaism, to be a people set apart. And when the Romans came in, they took their most precious manuscripts and they, the, the Old Testament, and they hid them in the caves, which were discovered a few decades ago. It's speculated that John the Baptist was a member of that Essene community. And if scholars have read these scrolls, not only of the Old Testament, but also the laws that go governed the Essene community, in one sense, it's hard not to admire them because it's a bleak, forbidding environment in which they lived. When we were there in the Holy Land, there was a heat wave uncharacteristically hot. The temperatures soared to 110 degrees as we walked in these ancient ruins as they've been excavating uh, the Essene community there at, at Qumran. It's hard not to admire these people who gave up everything for the sake of their religious faith. And yet they saw themselves as the saved people and everyone else as the sinners. John the Baptist, if he did study with them for a while, was guided not just simply by those laws, but John was open to hearing the guidance of the Holy Spirit, called him forth from that radical community to proclaim the coming of the Messiah. Jesus was baptized not far from that in the River Jordan. And it struck me so forcibly that Jesus centered his ministry in the north, in Galilee and Capernaum, which is lush and green. He delivered the Beatitudes in this, on this beautiful hillside that overlooks the Sea of Galilee. He multiplied the loaves and the, fish, and the fishes in this beautiful landscape. So much of Jesus' public ministry was centered around Capernaum in this beautiful countryside on the Sea of Galilee. Contrast that with the radical asceticism of the Essenes that are out in the desert that are saying, this is what it means to follow the Lord. You got to give up everything and you got to suffer because everybody else is going to hell in a handbasket. Jesus centers his ministry in the beauty of nature, and his proclamation is not one of, you're the elect and everybody else is going to hell. His ministry is one of, be guided by the Spirit. As Paul says in his first reading today, the law is not written in the book anymore. The law is written in your heart. Last Sunday, we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, this coming of the Holy Spirit into our hearts. Now the vestments are green, ordinary time, living in the gift of our baptism, living in the gift of our baptism, which means being guided by the Spirit, not by our whims, not disregarding the law, but living what Jesus came to fulfill, being guided by the Holy Spirit, following the law of love, listening in deep prayer to how God is calling us to live our lives. That's a, law, that's a life of love and joy and hope. And that's the ordinary work of the Christian. That's our ordinary work in ordinary time. Amen. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.